Good afternoon, folks. My name is Joe Furla, and I will be leading today's boot camp for analytics, uh, the Advanced Analytics Boot Camp, uh, creating and uh, customizing reporting to fit your needs. We'll go ahead and get started today, as always, with a couple housekeeping items. Um, first off, please note, I am not dev, nor am I PM. So if we do talk about any forward-facing items today, please do be aware um, that I don't control schedules for dev or PM. So while I'm giving you the most accurate information I have at this point in time, um, of course, it's always subject to change as uh, again, I don't control their schedules, and of course, we all understand that like security or vulnerabilities or you know priorities change as development is progressing. Also, as well, please note today's session will be recorded for quality control and training purposes. Um, however, I cannot send out the deck from today's session nor the recording. Um, it will be posted in the future. Um, in the Enable University portion of the uh, Enable Me por uh, portal. Um, and that should take just a couple uh, days, maybe a week or two, um, as this is now the second time we've run this boot camp, uh, the first time being this morning. Quick intro to myself um, I've been here for about seven years. I started in a company as a channel sales representative uh, just after the Logic Now acquisition um, by SolarWinds. I uh, found I'm not the best salesperson out there, but I do make a good consultant uh, and I do know our products pretty well. Um, so I was able to make the move uh, to sales engineer, being uh, uh, the first of the channel sales representatives to make that jump. And I sat in the sales engineer role uh, for a good amount of time uh, before being given the opportunity to join the partner success management uh, uh, team as one of the original six to help implement and create that motion here at Enable. I was there for a number of years um, before being given the opportunity to become the Insight head nerd, uh, which quickly evolved into math and operational efficiency as well. Um, and of course, analytics has been added to my plate. Um, I've also got Cloud Commander and a couple other tools here at uh, Enable. So quite happy to be here. Happy to do today's bootcamp because I do think um, analytics is quite a nice tool and it is very quickly um, getting better. So very happy to be working with it. Uh, if you do need to contact me, please note in the right-hand corner or right-hand side of the slide, you've got my email, uh, joseph.ferla, that's F-E-R-L-A, at enable.com. You can catch me on Reddit as Head Nerd Joe, uh, and you can find me on LinkedIn as Joe Furla. Um, so again, if you do have any follow-up questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. And if I can't, I'll make sure we find the right folks that can. So what we're going to go over today is going to come in three parts. We're going to do a general overview of analytics just to, if we haven't been in the tool, familiarize ourselves with the interface and the reporting. Um, if we have used the tool, give ourselves a nice quick review of what it can and cannot do. Um, then we will move into two uh, styles of customization. We'll look at customization in the analytics platform itself, uh, and then we'll look at direct database ac access and how um, we can look at uh, uh, interacting with the information directly on that Snowflake database. So we'll do a quick overview, general layout of analytics. We'll go through the dashboard. Uh, review the default reporting, check out scheduling permissions and exporting the data, that kind of deal, um, and you know, dive into the, the meat of the program. Please note, analytics is available uh, inside the uh, NCentral UI itself. Um, it is a Snowflake database-based reporting, um, and it is very similar, well, it is Power BI um, based. So when we look at the reporting, uh, 
I'm assuming we're going to most mostly be familiar with the structure and the setup. So let's dive right in. Um, once I find my dashboard where it got off to, there we are. All right, um, and of course, they're going to make me log in because I connected to the VPN. All right, let's pull that passcode. My apologies here, folks. All right. So, no matter what level of uh, analytic, or sorry, of and central we're on, be it at the system, the SO, the customer, or site level, um, we're going to see analytics in the dashboard underneath the analytics heading. So we'll click into the dashboards. Please note that no matter what level we're at, we are going to be showing uh, the same data. Um, so please do be aware as we're giving access to the tool of that particular wrinkle. On the left-hand side, we're gonna have our nice filters um, where we'll be able to split by type, custom, or default, and then we'll be able to divide up by category as well. Um, the category here becomes quite nice when we're customizing our reports, and we'll take a look at that um, when we get there. But for the time being, we're gonna focus on our default reports. We've got the original six that if you've used analytics, you're familiar with, the backup devices and backup session reporting, the device inventory and summary reporting, the ESR or executive summary report, patch status, which was the original pass, pass, patch report. There we go. We got that out eventually. Um, and we've recently added the patch compliance report. And that's going to be the item that we're working out of today, mostly. So we click into our dashboard. It'll take us a second to load as it's pulling information from that database um, and creating the report. Each of these reports are global. So everything within that uh, default section, you can filter by client, site, devices, um, and then some report specific items like say applications or um, hardware versus software in the regards to patch we'll see severity and classification and we need to be aware of this especially when we're looking at exporting our reporting as well as customizing um, because we're going to want to take advantage of these filters so the reports are directed and uh, targeted for what we need the report here again very similar to power bi all of the widgets are able to be exported as necessary. Um, if possible, they are able to be drilled down through uh, and you can always look at spotlighting them as well. And they are interactive where necessary, right? So clicking on any of the denotations, like say for instance, I want stats on all installed patches. I can go ahead and look at pull the, pulling those. And of course it'll trickle down throughout the individual sheets or pages of the dashboard itself. I am a big fan of this new compliance report um, because it does allow us as MSPs to start looking at more patch compliancy items where the original patch status report was very um, cut and dry with was it installed, was it not, right? When was it installed and that kind of deal. Where this we're gonna start breaking up more by classification, customer statuses, we'll be able to see pending installations and how quickly they're going to be coming down the pipeline, which is quite nice for our end users especially when we're in those compliance heavy um, or security heavy uh, verticals or just tend to be security oriented as end users to begin with. And we'll see items with no approval. Um, and then we'll also see a uh, good amount of patch details in here. Now we do need to be aware of our tables and how often we are using them inside analytics 
because we do have the ability to export these reports in two fashions. The first is going to be a manual export where we come to the export drop down. I'll select PowerPoint. Of course, you could select PowerPoint or PDF. We'll get our nice little blue box telling us, hey, this has started. And we can continue to work in our regular schedule while that download's being generated. So we'll take a look at scheduling and sending. We can also pull information out by scheduling and sending. We'll come to add new here to add a new schedule. We'll choose our format, PowerPoint or PDF. You can password protect the file as you need. Enter in the appropriate um, Uh, enter in the appropriate recipients. We're going to pause real quick. You'll get the nice green notification when the report's ready for download. Just click download and you're off to the races. Okay. You can add or you need to add subject line, patch reports, a nice message. And then you can look at sending a copy to yourself as well and schedule as necessary. So here, let's set up a weekly report that's gonna come out on the Monday of each week. We'll start that next week. And then we do have to select an end date. So we'll just go to the end of the year here and we'll click save. So now I have scheduled, oops, I need to put in a password. Uh, so I've now scheduled this report to be sent. I can share the password with my end user if necessary um, and look at uh, doing this for a number of clients, technicians, engineers, however we would like. Under scheduled and sent, we do have the ability to manage our schedule as well. For our individual reports that we have filtered by or uh, uh, organized by category here. Clicking in, I get the ability to edit as I would need, and I'll also have the ability to edit um, as well as delete reporting here. Uh, and you can get a preview of the dashboard um, or a preview of the report that we are sending out here as well. So you can see what each of these slides or exports is going to look like. We'll go ahead and delete my schedule so I don't accidentally send a report to somebody who doesn't exist. All right. With the exports themselves, we do need to be aware that PDF or PowerPoint, just due to the nature of how we're pulling the reporting, they are um, going to contain the filter information. So if we are sending these to our clients, please look at um, filtering properly so that your end users are one seeing the proper information, but two aren't seeing reporting for some of your other end users um, or seeing any sensitive information from other businesses. I did mention the tables and how we need to be aware of them. Okay, the tables are not interactive inside the reporting. So do be careful as to what we're going to be sending to our clientele. Um, and also if we're using these for a QBR, you might as well just want to remove um, those items from the reporting through customization. Each of the dashboards comes with three quote unquote refresh options. We have the sync, which would be a hard sync to the database. Um, and to your end central instance. This is only to be used if your sync schedule is missed. So for instance, if we are syncing with the database once a day, you get in, that sync happens at 10 a.m. It has not happened, go ahead, click the sync button. It's not something to be willy-nilly used throughout the day. Um, because it is a sync of the entire analytics tool. We do have the reload dashboard, um, which will reload to pull from the most current sync. Um, and then we have the reset data, um, which will pull individual uh, widget information of uh, 
uh, with the, the most current data to make sure we are up to date. Um, reloading will also reset filters, so do be aware there. In regards to permissions, underneath admins, user management, and of course, roles, we do have permissions for analytics. We'll go all admin here. Um, please note uh, that for the export, um, disable or enabling, we give you the ability to manage or not. It's very black and white. You can or cannot pull this information out. Um, and then for the reports, you have the ability to read, manage, or uh, no access. So as we're giving our technicians access to the tool, we want to um, look at making sure we're properly denotating between exports and management. Um, I would say, you know, your L1 techs are going to get a read only for the report section and a manage for the export. I'd want them to be able to get the data out. Um, you know, your engineers, your service delivery management team, uh, uh, that kind of deal they'd want both in the manage realm um, and then for your account management team um, and sales team they're probably going to have the ability to export data just like the technicians as well as read the data just like technicians so some quite good flexibility within the tool when it comes to um, reporting in general um, and some good flexibility when it comes to our permissions. All right. So customization within the dashboard. Okay. Again, the dashboard is Power BI based. So all of the defaults and the customized items, but more importantly, the defaults, we have the ability to customize um, and start working on either from scratch or from the pre-built dashboard. You can save those dashboards and you can look at generating off of custom reporting um, or generating iterations of the custom reporting. And I tend to feel that's best for things like the ESR or patch compliance um, that are customer facing. And we're going to be looking at sending those to each of our clientele. Um, and of course, you can pull those custom reports in the same fashion that we would uh, be looking at pulling our uh, standard default report. All right, my apologies, I had to cough there. All right, so we're going to take this patch compliance report and we're going to look at customizing here. So how I would get into this is I can come to copy and edit. I can give the patch a or the new report a nice name. So we're going to call this end users patching compliance, right? Category, you can customize as you would need. So here I'm going to typically look at putting business name. If I'm doing this for a particular client, patching compliance, right? Or look at say category being patching compliance per end user org right so i can continue to use this we'll give a nice description of what this particular report's going to be doing and we'll go ahead and we'll create okay we'll note within the dashboard we now have our patching compliance per end user org uh, uh, category. Okay. If I was to quickly save here, come back out of edit mode, we'll talk about that in a second, and come back, you'll note I now have my category here of patching compliance per end user. So I can quickly start through the use of those custom categories, better organizing my dashboard. 
right? Be it patching compliance per customer, backup per customer, ESR per customer, or I can start to create categories for my individual customers as well to consolidate all of their reporting in one place. Um, just some nice uh, best practices um, uh, with the tool. I do note if you just got um, analytics enabled uh, within your dashboard, it will wait for the next 24 um, or the next sync to happen uh, in that 24 hour cycle. Um, so it might be waiting till uh, the morning to run that particular sync. Um, if you previously saw your dashboard syncing and it has not uh, synced in the past, 24 hours please do let me get this open in a new tab here um, come into analytics itself um, and you can either go into an individual or go into an individual report to sync you should see your sync denotations here on the left hand side refreshing, telling us it is syncing at this time. If you do the hard sync and it doesn't update any of the information here, um, please, and the hard sync being right here, you can see where my next possible one may happen. Um, contact support, uh, as something's going on there where you're not talking to the database in the proper fashion. Um, but again, if it's it's a uh, brand spanking new um, sync will happen within the first 24 hours. That being said, um, coming into reporting or into the individual dashboards themselves may also trigger a sync. Um, and if that's the behavior you're seeing, it should um, cascade down as this morning. Here, let's back up. Uh, when I ran the boot camp at 8 a.m. Eastern, uh, the only report that had synced was uh, the uh, patch status here. And coming into the compliance report um, forced that uh, uh, sync to trickle down. So you shouldn't have to go into every report to sync. If it is the case that, again, you're having to go into every report to force that sync, um, contact support. I don't believe that that's proper behavior. All right, so we've got our dashboard in edit mode, which is where we're allowing changes to be made to these dashboards and the customization. First thing we'll note is our uh, sheet count. Here we have four, now we're in the eight range. Okay, you will note you can hide sheets as needed. Okay, um, and the hidden sheets here that are built into the reports pull information that is pertinent to the other more visual sheets, but not necessary for, say, usage of the report. So, for instance, if I'm pulling a technician's patch compliance report, um, I am more than likely going to unhide something like patch details uh, and look at renaming this sheet to something a bit more granular than just patch details because we already have a nice high level overview here. And here I'm gonna look at digging into more information. Okay, you'll see tool tips um, where if you come in, we'll be able to see some basics and see some things like overall counts um, so that we can verify our information's coming correctly. All right, we're gonna add a new page here. All right, so building, how does this work for us? Well, it's Power BI pretty much, drag, drop, select, right? Doesn't get quite much easier than that. So first things first, you can format your report page. Um, you can also rename here. More importantly, can you set a background? Right, so here I'm setting my nice nerd background um, and you can size appropriately. What this will allow you to do is look at coming in and saying, 
hey, I'm going to customize these items and look at using these images to brand. Now, please note, if you would like to brand, you're going to want to brand, you know, just the top corner of that particular page that you would like to deal with. Um, and we can look at uh, dealing with filter information, header, input, border, the whole nine yards. So some nice and easy um, customizations that we can make to our reporting. Now, we also have the ability to build our visuals with a number of different items. In this particular case, what we're going to be looking at here is going to be our compliance report over the past 30 days. While the more global or more expanded view um, is inside the original patch compliance report, I'd like to narrow this down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a card in there, um, which is just going to be some totals as information, and then I'm gonna have a table in here as well. So let's add my table, let's add my card. Get my card up here, table just underneath it, and let's expand this out, okay? You do have the ability to use bar graphs, line graphs, pie charts, the whole nine yards here, um, but for today's purposes, we're going just a little bit quick and a little bit nitty gritty. Um, so we're going uh, um, to look at uh, a little bit quicker of report generation here. Maybe not so much as fancy um, as I'm sure we can all extrapolate that. So inside my table, I'm going to need a couple things, right? First off, I'm going to need my customer name. Okay, I can come in, you'll see my varying repositories that I can pull from. All right, I'll just select customer name here, we'll watch it appear in my table. Okay, and again, this is going to be an overview. Okay, not doing something customer specific quite yet. Outside of that, I'm going to want to look at patching information. So now I'm going to want something like patch um, name or some identifier. So we can do a nice general search. We'll see metric items. We'll get to those in a moment. We'll see patch name. So we'll select that. I'm also going to want classification and KB number just for reference. So we'll quickly add those as well. Then what I'll look at doing is searching for installation or install date, where I can come here and look at pulling my individual items. So I'm going to be looking at install calendar date and we'll see quite quickly my report expanding so let's truncate the name here just a smidge right i can see when it's installed the items here haven't been installed yet um, and i can put a couple other items in here like whether or not date of pending has been chosen so pending or let's actually go with approval date. And again, we're gonna pull calendar date here. Now, this is where we start to get a bit confusing. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna hit my nice little drop down. I'm gonna rename this visual to install date. And I'm gonna rename here to uh, approval date so i get my columns to be a little bit more uh uh fillable if you will right um last thing probably going to want to put in here um, are going to be a couple filters now we have a couple ways that we can look at adding filters we can add filters to the individual pages or we can add filters to all pages in this particular case because i'm specifically looking for certain dates in time 
time, I'm going to be looking at filters on this page. So what I want to look at doing here is comparing, say, failed versus installed, right? So I can now come in and let's look at my install date. Again, we're going to be doing a calendar date, but instead of checking it this time, I'm going to drag and drop to my filters on page. Okay, note, I cannot rename here. So we want to be aware as to what we are pulling in and filter as we're going if we're going to pull two items that are very simple or very similar, excuse me. So I'm going to pull relative date here and I'm going to say we want this in the past 30 days, including today, and I've got my nice filter. Now I need to say look at failed. Right, and I'm going to now uh, pull a failed status, and I can come in and create one of those filters as well. But what I also want to be doing is I kind of want the patch status of pending installation in here, okay, where I can look at adding that or not as a filter. And I probably do want that as a metric as well, to where I can now see if any of my patches that have not been installed, are they pending installation, right? So just some nice report or patches that have been approved, but uh, may not also, or may not be installed. So just some nice reporting. Then in my card, I can do things like patch install card total. So click my card widget, select, select my number here. Um, I'll clear out my search. We'll take a quick look at what we can do with our counting items, right? Declined card. Um, I can look at not actioned as a count, right? I've got pending, not required, installed with errors. I've just got a good amount of items that I can look at adding to this particular report to pull the information I need. So again, I'll come and I'll save. And we'll note that before exiting the uh, uh, edit mode, I do have the ability to save a copy as. So I can come in, take all of this customization that I've done, save a copy, and rather than rebuilding this client by client, I just go in and change a filter. I can adjust my view as necessary, right? I can come in and turn on drill throughs, drill downs, right? I can add text boxes, I can control shapes, buttons, the like. And it'll come in and I'll exit my report. Once I exit my report here, uh, hidden pages are removed. I can come in and schedule or export as necessary. I can also come in and delete that report as needed. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to delete this. We'll remember that this was the only one in that category, and the category removes itself as it's no longer needed. So just some nice customization that we can perform inside the report so everything that we need is easily accessible when we need it. And we can have flexible scheduling and sending as we go through. Okay. Now, more importantly, or I shouldn't say more importantly, but much more time consuming, but powerful is the ability to get direct data access added to your licensing within Cloud Commander, which means we can directly access the database. Okay, This is beneficial for a couple reasons. One, because we can then um, connect to a product outside of Incentral, say a Tableau or Power BI, 
so that we can go further with the customization of our reporting. It also allows us to directly access the entire database in that report. And that's something that is quite important or quite valuable because as it stands, the data points within analytics are report specific. So I'm not gonna be able to come in and combine patching with say a software inventory in, Dan in analytics itself. Now with direct data access, I can certainly do that. Okay, but that's um, something that we're looking at remedying. It's a much more difficult problem than just we should do it, right? Because the whole point of analytics is to make customization pretty quick, pretty streamlined and pretty simple and cross-pollinization of our reports throws a lot of complexity into that. Um, so as it stands, if you'd like that complexity, direct data access is where we want to sit. Okay. Um, accessing the data directly through Snowflake, pretty simple, pretty easy to understand. You log into Snowflake, you select the right warehouse, select the, the right database and subsets and all of that, and you're off to the races. Okay. Um, of course, integrating with Power BI or Tableau, pretty simple. You go, you click connect, you enter in the appropriate information that you can pull directly from Snowflake, and again, you're off to the races. What gets difficult here, okay, is what are we pulling from? So we'll hop into our demo and we'll take a look. So Starting off, one of the nice things we have, especially if we're looking at direct data access, is within our uh, help manual, there's a very good section on analytics, which is nice because we'll give you access about what's in the dashboard, how data synchronization works, exporting and the like. But more importantly, we'll go through some information on the analytics data, We'll have a definitions list and a schemas list here. Um, but while that's good, we have the data access model section. So let's look at patch here. We'll come in, we get our visual representation of the schema. Okay, we get our ability to look at our tables that we have access to with keys for dimension and fact, as well as cardinality information. And we'll get some boilerplate uh, uh, queries that we can look at using. And we'll see these for each of our reports. We also have the overarching direct data access dictionary here, which gives us all of our tables, column names, data types, nullable, yes or no, basic comments, just an invaluable piece of information because I can come in here quite quickly and say, I need to find a app list, right? I can control F and find all of my application items, right? If I need to find operating system. I can come in and find all of my operating system data points quite quickly. Um, and this is just a good and valuable source of information. All right, so inside Snowflake, um, it works just like uh, you would expect it. You'll have the ability to select your warehouse. Um, you'll want to be in share user and um, typically the warehouse within that item. You can come in to create worksheets or um, uh, databases or dashboards as you would need. Um, I do tend, uh, sorry, worksheets or dashboards. I do tend to work in worksheets, um, but that's because I'm reasonably new to Snowflake. I will be quite honest. I've been in here for about a week and a half. Um, so uh, uh, reasonably new, but reasonably happy with the power of the tool here. So I'm going to come in. Let's make a new SQL worksheet. Of course, you could make a Python worksheet and start compartmentalizing everything in folders as you would need. Okay. For the worksheet, 
we'll make sure we're on the proper warehouse. So here we again want that share user warehouse and underneath our shared analytics data, we'll get some basic information, uh, schema items such as views, right? What are we looking at? Um, and then we'll also look at getting the shared data views section as well. Um, so coming in, we can get some information as to what's being shown, how it's being shown quite quickly. Okay. And then of course, you can come in and enter your query as you would need. So for this one, we will need some familiarity with SQL. Um, this is not designed to be a SQL bootcamp. Um, so I'm just going to copy and paste my queries in here. Um, feedback inside the questions section. If we do want, say, a basics of SQL bootcamp, let me know. Um, maybe that's something we can put together uh, um, as you know, we'll want to have at least an understandings uh, or at least an understanding of the basics of SQL, right? At least a select, right? What information am I getting from? Where is that information coming from? Where, what are the parameters I'm putting on this particular information and then group by, how am I grouping it? Or looking at join um, and cascading down in the complexity of the, the information we're able to pull there. Okay. So here, pretty much what we're just going to be looking at is a count over the past 30 days of our failed and aborted patches. So I can come in, I'll hit play to run my request, right? We'll see quite quickly that I have very few, right? And I'll get my charts that show me, well, how long the query took, but more importantly, um, what is, what's the information we're pulling? Are there any charts that I need to be looking at in my results? Now, this isn't quite the most fun of the queries that we can look at performing or doing, right? So we can get to something that's going to be a little bit more complicated where inside this patching mess around report, we're looking at selecting a good amount of items. We're still on that 30 date, 30 um, day to current day run, right? But here I'm looking at approvals, failures, and installs. Now we'll note my approvals are going to be coming within the next 14 days. So what's happened in the past 30, what's failed, and what's coming up, and then I can group them as I need. Again, we're not going to want to go through this whole thing here because let's be honest, SQL can be a bit sloggy sometimes, right? But we go ahead, we click run, let's get some. Oh, and of course we have a syntax error. Should not have run that report again. What's going on on line 16? Well, it ran this morning. Let's see if I get the same error again. I do not, there we go. All right, so we'll go ahead and let this run. Now, while this is running, okay, Please note the direct data access here is good because of the flexibility we're getting, where if we notice inside my databases, I'm not limited to my just patching information here. Okay, I get the entire list, whereas inside analytics, if I come into one of my reports and I look at customizing, I am limited again to the information that comes with that particular report. Um, but more importantly, data points get into the database first, which I think should go without saying, right? But that also means if we have direct data access, as improvements are coming to the data sets, as we're getting closer to parity with something like, say, report manager, or we're bringing in a specific piece of information that we need. Right? This is going to be a nice place to sit right? with direct database access because you'll be able to get to it quicker. Right? So my example here of what can we look at hitting, when we see data, right? we're limiting 
our data information, right? Like I'm not seeing much on device that goes with say application, right? I'm not seeing much that goes into anything other than just patch here, where here, right? Say I come into some of our device summary information, I'm getting a much longer list, right? I have more items that I can look at choosing from. All right, so do be aware there. Right. Um, is it very far earlier than what's brought into a the analytics dashboard itself? Not particularly, depending on what you're going to be looking at pulling, but it is something um, we need to be aware of. Like if we're creating a whole new report, um, like say monitors and automation, right, we'll see a little bit more lag. Like we'll get it to the direct database access and it will take you know, three to four weeks to get into to the dashboard. If it's new data points to a report, it may take, you know, a week to a couple days, maybe a couple weeks at most. Okay, so now that this is run, right, we can come in, we can peruse our metrics over the past 30 days, items that are going to be coming up within the next 14, Right, I can interact with my individual charts to get my columns that I may need to access, right? And I can come into and start manipulating the, the information as I would like, right? With the ability to look at adding individual columns as well as filters within the Snow, Snowflake tool as I would need and download as necessary. Okay. Of course, not as streamlined as, say, Power BI or Tableau, but if we're getting incredibly granular and we're getting really customized in the reports, I think putting effort into the SQL side of the deal is quite nice. Okay. Right. That brings us to the end of today's session. Thank you so much for joining. Again, follow up if you have any questions and I'll look at seeing you folks in some subsequent boot camps or office hours as we move forward. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.